All right, good morning. What a great day it is, and today is a momentous occasion for families. Can we get a clap for that? <laughs> I knew you all had that passion in you, so figured I'd prompt that. So we want to welcome to all those who are joining on Facebook Live for our County Executives Ball's exciting announcement today. We have a great lineup of speakers, and before you hear from them, I want to acknowledge many of our partners and supporters who are present here. We, also, we have the hospital, and with the hospital, you'll hear from them, but I also want to acknowledge Vice President Elizabeth Crom. We have Chase Brexton, but I also would like to uh, specifically call out Dr. Fariba Fakiri and the Chase Brexton team. Yolanda Sonye, the Administrator of the Office of Human Rights and Equity. Representing Dr. Rossman and the Health Department, we have Elise Marazzo, the Director of Nursing, and Erin Anderson, who's the Assistant Director of Nursing. And joining us from Casa de Maryland, we have many of our organizers and friends, and specifically like to acknowledge Trent Leon Lierman, who is the Maryland organizing lead. And let's also welcome many of our members from both the African American Roundtable and the La Alianza Workgroup. And we'd also, of course, like to welcome Jessica Cook, representing Senator Ben Cardin's office. And now let's hear from our champion, who tirelessly works to ensure that all families are thriving. Let's welcome County Executive Calvin Ball. Thank you so much, Angela. And I think that you were able to hopefully tell from uh, that wonderful cast of leaders that this was a collaborative effort. And uh, those who only see this side, you can see, but there is a beautiful crowd of dedicated individuals who care about the future of Howard County. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. In Howard County, we aspire to foster an environment where all of our residents can live, work, play, and grow to become their very best selves. We will always be data informed and people driven, particularly when it comes to health and wellness. And frankly, as we examine data related to maternal care in Howard County, we saw some clear opportunities. In our most recent Howard County Community Health Needs Assessment, the data showed that almost 12% of our Hispanic mothers and 8% of our black mothers in Howard County received late prenatal care or no prenatal care at all. In the case of our Hispanic mothers, that's more than four times the percentage of our white mothers. That disparity in Howard County is simply unacceptable. Babies of mothers who do not get prenatal care are three times more likely to have low birth weight and five times more likely to die than those born to mothers who do get care. These same mothers and babies are also less likely to have quality health care coverage and also may be less likely to know where to turn for much needed help. For them, the hospital becomes the provider of last resort, which is not the best system for anyone. So today, we're making a groundbreaking announcement. In my proposed budget for the coming year, there is $1.3 million for an innovative partnership that will make sure that vital prenatal and postpartum care is available and affordable for uninsured and underinsured women in Howard County. With this investment, 
We will be able to work with our partners at the Howard County Health Department, Howard County General Hospital, the Horizon Foundation, and many others to expand maternal and child health care to approximately 300 women annually. This new program will include training doulas to provide guidance and support to women during labor, providing direct support to pregnant women and new moms on breastfeeding, healthy eating, and postpartum care, expanding home visits, and supporting teen parents. We know that this care will truly be life-saving. While uninsured and underinsured women face challenges when it comes to accessing care, there are also broader social, economic, and structural obstacles. People of color face barriers to care, including limited access to providers and hospitals and lack of access to culturally and linguistically appropriate care. Not only does prenatal care help ensure a baby is born healthy, it also helps ensure the mother does not have any complications that could be avoidable, yet may be deadly. With prenatal care, doctors can spot and treat maternal health problems early and discuss with pregnant women how to give their unborn children a healthy start to life. These services are the type of care that truly make a difference in the lives of pregnant women and new moms. And everyone in Howard County should be able to afford and access this needed care. In Howard County, we want to ensure all our residents can be healthy and thriving, which is why we collaborate with our community to provide a comprehensive approach to health and well-being. Our work to provide data to the community, our push for healthy foods for all, our focus on equity led to our recognition last year by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, which awarded Howard County the prestigious Culture of Health Prize, making us one of only four communities in the nation to receive that award. But that does not mean that our work is complete, just the opposite. We must continue to look for gaps in health and well-being and ensure that no one in our community falls between the cracks. And that is what this targeted innovative program does. Every pregnant woman needs access to prenatal and postnatal care to ensure that her and her baby's well-being and health are protected. It should not be lost on anyone that we are announcing this investment at a time when our Supreme Court appears ready to roll back our national commitment to women's health. But in Howard County, we will redouble our efforts to support the health of our mothers and babies. I'm proud to live in a state that continues to protect a woman's right to make decisions about what is best for her body and her family. I'd like to thank our state lawmakers, and you'll hear from some of them a little bit later, for taking steps to protect those rights. In our community, we will also do what is needed to ensure access to vital health services for women. In Howard County, we will not slide back to a time when women needed to hide or travel long distances or resort to risky procedures or unsafe providers. And we will not remain silent as women's rights are under attack. Today, we are announcing a critical step, a giant leap, if you will, by ensuring that all our residents can access and afford prenatal and postpartum care. And we will continue to work with our partners here today and beyond to raise awareness about how important health issues and to do whatever is needed to support all of the women and families in our community. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive Ball. And now we have a Howard County resident from Columbia, Maryland, here to provide her story. Let's welcome our guest, Iris.
Hola, buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es Iris Rivera. Soy miembro de casa, residente de Howard y un inmigrante indocumentada de Honduras. Lo más importante es que soy mamá. Tengo dos niñas, una niña de seis años y una bebé de cuatro meses. Estoy aquí porque creo que todas las madres embarazadas deberían tener salud médica. Hello everyone, my name is Iris. I am a CASA member, a resident of Howard County, an undocumented immigrant from Honduras. But most important, I am a mother. And I have two beautiful children, my six-year-old daughter and my, two, and my four months old daughter too. I am here because I believe that all pregnant mothers should have health care. Desde que vine a este país nunca he sido elegible para los programas de salud del estado y tuve que pasar mi último embarazo sin atención médica. Durante mi último embarazo traté de recibir ayuda en las clínicas comunitarias que están disponibles para personas como yo, pero fui, fue muy difícil porque algunas clínicas no ofrecen servicios médicos para personas embarazadas. Tuve que viajar muy lejos para recibir la atención médica que necesitaba. Se puede imaginar estar embarazada y tener una lucha para llegar, tener que luchar para llegar a las citas médicas. Since I moved here, I had never been eligible to stay health insurance, and I had to go through my last pregnancy without health care. During my last pregnancy, I tried my best to rely on the community clinics that provide care to people like me. However, I was, it was very hard. Some clinics do not offer service for pregnant women, so I had to travel very far to get care that I need. Can you imagine being pregnant and struggling to get the clinic appointments? Debía ser, es, debía ser estado un control médico y haber un doctor mucho más seguido, pero no podía tener acceso a un seguro médico. Hubiera hecho una gran diferencia. Estoy muy agradecida que tuve un embarazo sano y que mi bebé está bien. Muchas mujeres en mi comunidad no tienen la misma experiencia. Mujeres indocumentadas como yo están perdiendo sus hijos, se están muriendo y están sufriendo de muchas complicaciones. I should have seen a doctor much, much more often than I did, but I could not. Having access to prenatal care would have made the world a difference. I am so grateful that my pregnancy was safe and my baby is safe. So many women in my community do not have the same fate. Undocumented women like me are losing their children, dying themselves, or suffering from several complications. Hoy me siento muy feliz por haber metido en el presupuesto a las mujeres embarazadas sin documentadas del condado de Howard para poder obtener seguro médico durante el embarazo y después del embarazo. Este gran logro significa mucho para mí y para mi comunidad y le quiero agradecer mucho al doctor Calvin y a todos los que lucharon para que esto se pudiera lograr. Les agradezco mucho y que Dios les bendiga. Today I feel happy and excited to the budget pass for me and many pregnant women be able to get attention here during pregnancy and after pregnancy in my county. This means a lot. And this maternity care will change many lives. I am very thankful with Dr. Calvin Ball and many other organizations that this, they care for us. Thank you all and God bless you. Thank you, Edith, for that powerful testimony. And now, this would not be possible without our state delegation fighting in Annapolis for us. So let us bring up first State Senate Delegation Chair Clarence Lamb. All right, I'd like to thank the county executive for the stool. First, I noticed he didn't have to use it earlier, but many of us do appreciate that. And so, good morning. Uh, I am State Senator Clarence Lamb and the Senate Chair of the Howard County Delegation. Here with our House Chair, Delegate Courtney Watson, and others from um, other elected officials, including I see Councilman uh, Opal Jones here as well. 
I want to begin by thanking our county executive, Dr. Calvin Ball, for his leadership on this really important issue. As a physician, we in the medical community, and that includes, I see Dr. Ahmed here, who's the CEO of Howard County General um, and an OBGYN, we know how incredibly important it is to have access to prenatal and postnatal care for mothers, babies, and their families. There's overwhelming evidence that babies whose mothers have prenatal care have a much lower risk of low birth weight or premature death, better nutritional outcomes, and reductions in potential birth defects and developmental disabilities, some of the information which you can see are here to uh, my right. Prenatal and postnatal care have a long-lasting positive impact on a new baby, and that's why this additional $1.3 million by the account executive for those who are uninsured is so incredibly important. As the proud father of a new eight-month-old daughter, my family personally knows how important prenatal care can be. And that's why we wanted to make sure other families have this benefit as well. So earlier this year, I sponsored the Healthy Babies Equity Act in the State Senate, along with Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick in the House, which will require the state's Medicaid program to extend prenatal and postnatal care to uninsured pregnant women and their babies, regardless of their immigration status. Thank you so much. And through the strong support of advocates like so many of those that are here today, like CASA and I see the Horizon Foundation and others, we were able to successfully pass the Healthy Babies Equity Act early during the legislative session because of the possibility of needing to override a veto, get it on the governor's desk, and we were relieved that in the end, he did not veto the bill. Instead, he let the bill go into law without his signature. But A, the bill does not take effect until July 1st, and B, it requires the Maryland Department of Health to apply for a special waiver from the federal government for increased federal support to offset most of the state's increased costs of expanding this program. We hope that the Maryland Department of Health will act expeditiously in applying for this waiver, but I have no confidence and we have no assurance that the state health department under this governor will act anytime soon in applying for this waiver. We may be waiting for the next governor to arrive before the state's Medicaid program will fully expand this important coverage, all the while hundreds of mothers and babies may go without access to prenatal and postnatal care. And that's why what County Executive Ball is proposing here is so incredibly important. We can't wait for the state to get their act together to get Medicaid to cover new babies and mothers. This $1.3 million investment in county dollars will serve an important purpose among many, for, in, including serving as a bridge to make sure that all Howard County mothers and babies, regardless of their immigration status, have access to prenatal and postnatal care at places like Howard County General and with our county's health care providers, so that until the state fully implements the Healthy Babies Equity Act, as the General Assembly has already passed into law, we won't have mothers or babies who have stories like Iris going without the care that they need, need here in Howard County. Thank you so much to the county executive and to county leadership for making this happen. This is incredibly important for our communities. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I would just like to add to what Dr. Lamb told you about House Bill 1080 which is a bill that the Maryland General Assembly felt strongly about in terms of providing health care to expectant mothers. Because really, in 2022, in the state of Maryland, especially in the, in the county of Howard County, there should be no mother that goes without prenatal care. And it's, it's incredibly, incredibly, um, not only important to those mothers and those children, but it's our moral responsibility to take care of pregnant and expecting women. And one of the things that House Bill 1080 does is it not only provides that care to the expectant mother, but it provides care for up to one year to the newborn. So the newborn is covered under this bill as well. And while we certainly hope that our governor will agree with us that we need to provide every expectant mother with care in the state of Maryland. We know that if he fails to fund this, our county executive Calvin Ball has our back. So we thank you for that. 
Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Oviedo, and I am really, really excited to be here this morning. I did not write anything uh, because I, I really want to connect with my heart, and I really want to express all of the gratitude that I have today, Dr. Ball. Thank you. Uh, you put us together. You created Alianza Latina, brought us together, and said, I need you to tell me what our community, what our Latino community need. And that's what we did, right? And one of those recommendations was we need prenatal care. And here we are today. Here we are after advocating, you know, many strong groups, Horizon Foundation, CASA, so many others that I'm forgetting right now, and I'm shaking a little bit, so um, please forgive me. But, um, you know, we came together, we said, we need this. And you said, I stand with you, I support you. I'm gonna put $1.3 million on my proposed budget for this year because I want to see this reality. I understand our community needs it. It's basic care. I'm with you and you know here we are today so thank you thank you thank you for that our community appreciates it the second thing I, I want to say today is um, County Council members who right now have this in your hands you have a wonderful opportunity to create something special to make a difference to really touch the lives of people like the mother that you saw this morning the mothers that you heard from firsthand the other night here in your um, right here in this building, in, in, in the room, in the hearing, um, where you heard powerful stories of, you know, just strength, really, bravery. Women who are going through so many barriers right now, who have so many, yeah, barriers is the right word, um, to overcome because we do not have a prenatal care program here in Howard County. So you have a special opportunity in your hands Please protect, please fully, fully fund this 1.3 million that has been proposed by County um, Executive Ball so that we can see this become a reality here in our county. I don't need to talk about um, the importance of it because you've already heard it firsthand from those who are going to be impacted, directly impacted from this program. So I know you can do this. I know you want to do the right thing. And I thank you in advance because I know you're going to pass this 1.3 million. I'm going to go ahead and throw it out and, and bring it to the universe so that you guys go ahead and, and make this a reality. And lastly, I, I want to talk to my community. Um, quiero hablarle directamente a mi comunidad, uh, a la comunidad latina. Estamos aquí hoy. Eh, es, es un día importantísimo, un día grandísimo. Hemos logrado algo, un grupo de personas pequeño. Hemos logrado que se escuche nuestra voz. ¿sí? Nos unimos, un grupo de personas pequeños nos unimos, alzamos nuestra voz y dijimos, necesitamos cuidado prenatal para todas las mujeres, independientemente de su estatus migratorio, independientemente de nada. Queremos que todas las mujeres que viven en Howard County y están embarazadas tengan acceso a cuidado prenatal. Pocas personas logramos que el Ejecutivo nos escuche. Pocas personas que nos unimos, hicimos fuerza, logramos que el Ejecutivo escribiera en su budget 1.3 millones de dólares. El Ejecutivo nos está dando 1.3 millones de dólares. ¿Qué tenemos que hacer? ¿Sí? Porque todavía no es nuestro. ¿Qué tenemos que hacer? Tenemos que hacer fuerza. Tenemos que decirle al Consejo que nos lo dé. El millón y tres, el 1.3 millones de dólares están ahí en la mesa. Entonces, tenemos que llegar a la mesa. Tenemos que hacer tiempo. Estas madres están aquí. Estoy segura que no están desocupadas, que tienen trabajos, que tienen muchas otras citas, muchas otras cosas que hacer. Pero entienden la importancia de venir a hacer fuerza y estar aquí en este día. Y eso es lo que absolutamente todos los latinos del condado de Howard tenemos que hacer. Si queremos que estos programas se establezcan y queremos que el gobierno nos ayude, tenemos que venir y hablar con el Ejecutivo. Él nos está ayudando. Él está dispuesto a escuchar. Tenemos que venir y hacer presencia, hacer fuerza y decirle, aquí estamos, somos latinos, necesitamos esto. Y hoy, hoy es prueba de que él nos está abriendo sus oídos y su corazón y nos está diciendo, ok, comunidad latina, vengan, hablemos, conversemos y aquí tienen 1.3 millones. Así que únanse por favor al grupo de Facebook, Howard County Latino. Eh, manden emails al consejo, countycouncil.howardcountymd.gov es el email. Hay un número de teléfono también, no me lo aprendí, pero se los voy a poner en el grupo de Facebook. Es hora de abogar, es hora de levantarnos y decir, somos latinos, somos esenciales, estamos aquí en Howard County y somos poderosos. Así que gracias comunidad y vamos adelante que sí se puede. Good morning everyone on this beautiful spring day. I want to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Leah Medlock. I have many hats on today. I'm representing OBGYNs in Howard County, the state of Maryland, and honestly, the entire United States of America. 
I also am representing Onyx Medical Society, which is an organization in Howard County composed of physicians who are interested in improving the health and well-being of all patients of color. I'm also representing the African American Community Roundtable, a long-standing organization in Howard County, again, advocating for rights of people of color as well. But more importantly, I also am representing as moms. I have a four-month-old baby, and he would not be here without prenatal care. Prenatal care should not be something that you can only get if you're privileged, if you only have a certain job, if you only come from a certain place. And without prenatal care, my own son wouldn't be here. And I just want to bring to everyone's attention that prenatal care is not just for moms and babies, it's for the entire community of which that mom and baby lives in. Mothers and babies are the heart of almost every family that I've ever taken care of. And husbands and brothers and uncles would not be so well off without the support of mothers and babies. And it is sad to take care of a family that has lost a mother in childbirth. And it's not necessary, especially in Howard County in 2022. There are many insurance companies that will not take on a mother and provide prenatal care services if she's pregnant within the first year of she accumulating the insurance that's extremely unfortunate. So it's not just for those who are undocumented. And I've taken care of women who were hairdressers, who worked at fast food restaurants, who were born in this country and still don't have prenatal care because they can't afford insurance because it is so expensive. And I want to thank Dr. Ball and Howard County and the council for moving forward with this initiative. I was an OBGYN provider in Montgomery County and I saw the patients who participated in the same pilot program in Montgomery County. So good job, Howard County, for joining Montgomery County for stepping up. And this is not something that's brand new. Howard County used to do this 10 years ago. It was established, and it needs to be established again. And thank you so much for everyone that I've met on this journey. As an OBGYN, my doors are open. I want to take care of these patients. I welcome them in. I can decrease their risk of having a C-section. I can help them control their diabetes. I can make sure they're taking their blood pressure medication to increase the positive outcomes that I've already seen in the county next door. So thank you so much for everyone, and I'm hoping this is a statewide initiative. Have a wonderful day. Wow, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much. You know, one word comes to mind when I hear all the speakers this morning, and that is grateful. I'm grateful to be a resident of this county. I'm grateful to work for the only acute care organization in this county that takes care of these women and does deliveries. I'm grateful for having been a practicing obstetrician in my life, and for many of the years that I practiced, I've been in underserved communities. So I have seen firsthand the effect of having access to care. It's incredibly, incredibly important. And I'm very glad to be in a county that is this forward thinking and have state representatives that are this forward thinking about making sure that this is a priority. And as Howard County General Hospital, we look forward to partnering on this effort. It is incredibly important. And I do want to give a shout out to some of the folks that I work with that have been tireless advocates for years, years for bringing this forward. First, I'd like to thank Dr. Nia Leek, who is our chairwoman of OBGYN, and who also delivers many of these uncovered patients currently today and sees the effects of having this access. And Dr. Elizabeth Crom, who is the vice president of population health and advancement. It is incredibly important for us to continue programs like this to address the health care disparities, which are not only important for these mothers, but important for the community at large. So I am looking forward to this partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And it's a pleasure to be here on a beautiful morning. And first to thank uh, County Executive Ball and the County Council and the state delegates for the commitment of resources because Chase Brexton could not expand its commitment to this community without those resources, I can assure you. We see about 10,000 patients here in Howard County. 70% of them are uninsured. That is a heavy, heavy lift, and we do it, and we do it with other resources. These resources are gonna enable us to expand with maternal and, and, and child care. Uh, we have a tremendous group of loyal providers. I have to also uh, as, as Dr. Shafiq did, give credit to Dr. Freiba Fakiri. She has been medical director for 10 years here. <laughs> S 
So in summary, we, we think we can bring those moms who are now being seen in our centers back to Howard County, and then we will be able to expand that as well. So we thank you for both the money from the county, if we hope it's coming, and the state. <laughs> Critically important for us to continue our mission, and thank you. Okay, I know this crowd, and you're way too quiet. Um, so uh, I think we're gonna have to not just clap, but some whoops and hollers as well. Yes, let's hear it. I hope everybody here has been thanked. I am looking around and I'm thinking everybody has. So these remarks, I don't need anymore because everybody's been thanked. But a little history that I wanna provide. 10 years ago, I got to the foundation. The very first meeting that Glenn and I got to go to was on this topic. A few years before that, our public health budget had been cut and our maternity clinic run by the health department at that time was shut down. For 10 years, <laughs> we've been talking about this. We have funded pilots, uh, we've implemented pilots, and we never had sustained government support for those pilots. We have been through two county executives without funding from the county. So, not just claps, but some whoops and hollers for our current county executive, Calvin Ball. And we know behind every good leader is a great staff, and I have to thank the staff of the county executive. Angela, thank you with all my heart. As the CEO of the Horizon Foundation, as a mom, we haven't stopped working on this issue for a decade. All of you here have been our partners. Um, all of you here have not given up. Um, I want to personally thank all of our moms here today, our moms of color here today. I feel like in some ways that I need to say I'm sorry for the pain that we have caused in the past. And I hope today represents a new day. It represents the opportunity for us to move forward together as a community where we can ensure every single mother and family in this county starts off on the right foot um, and has access to needed vital healthcare services, period. A uh, few extra people that I want to thank. Um, Feli Sola Carter, a former board member of the Horizon Foundation. Uh, Yvette Aquindo, Dr. Yvette Aquindo, formerly of Chase Brexton. And Dr. Cileon Valero Colon. Uh, these three women on our board of trustees have never let me forget this issue, I promise. <laughs> they ask me about it all the time. And again, because I have great staff, Jennifer, Glenn, uh, Rosamar Melendez, who is here, who have never stopped fighting for this, thank you as well. Glenn, Jennifer, thank you. All right, so let this be a new day. Uh, we have state legislation uh, because of our state delegates who are here today, Senator Lamb, Delegate Watson, thank you for your tireless leadership in this state legislature, a whoop. Come on. We wouldn't be here today without those leaders fighting for us and without everyone standing here as advocates and making sure that we continue to make this a priority in Howard County and in Maryland. So together, right, we can make sure everybody, every mom, every family in Howard County can access the care they need to have healthy pregnancies and healthy babies. And to the Howard County Council, let's get this done. Thank you so much, Nikki, for that rousing ending we have here. We're going to conclude this event, but, but please don't leave. Because this is such a momentous occasion brought about by Dr. Ball, we are going to benchmark that with a photo. And those who are joining on Facebook Live, please share this with, with all of our communities. Um, and with that said, let's do one more hoop and holler and join us here on the stage as we conclude. Thank you.